What's up guys? Justin here with the sketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the new version of Lumion version 2025. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just like full disclosure, this is a paid promotion between me and Lumion, but honestly, I would have made this video anyway because I like to talk about the new releases and new things that come out with the new versions of rendering software anyway. So um, I'll talk through all of the features and kind of like the ups and downs and things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, and so there are a number of new features that have been added to Lumion 2025, but to me, one of the most interesting developments in this new version is something that we kind of theorized about about a month ago, which is there's now a standalone version of Lumion View separate from Lumion Pro. So there's now three different tiers um, for Lumion. There's the View version, the Pro version, and the Studio version. And so um, the pricing on the View is actually pretty interesting to me. So first year, it's $199 if you get it right now. And then after that, it's $229 a year. That's an annual membership, and it gets you access to the Lumion View add-on. And so at $199 a year, that's about $16.58 a month. And at $229, that's about $19 a month. That actually makes Lumion View a very accessible, lightweight renderer that works directly inside of SketchUp. So if you have lightweight needs, this is actually a very competitive option that is significantly better than the built-in SketchUp version. Now there's the Pro version over here and then the Studio version. Um, the Studio version can contains both a Lumion Pro and a Lumion View license. Um, the Pro version is just the Pro version. So it doesn't have anything having to do with Lumion View. And so what's really interesting though is now if you set up your materials and lights in Lumion View, um, they actually get transferred over into Lumion Pro. Um, and so basically what this means, because Lumion View works off of the PBR materials in SketchUp, right? So it uses the maps that you've already loaded into your SketchUp materials and displays them inside of the 3D rendering. But now basically what this means is if you open up that SketchUp file inside of Lumion itself, the lights that you've set up inside of SketchUp and Lumion View and the PBR materials and all of their maps also transfer. This is the first program I've seen that's done this and it's actually super helpful for doing your initial setup. So you can do an initial setup and uh, use that as kind of a preview until your uh, rendering kind of gets nailed down. But then as soon as you save the SketchUp file and open it and import it inside of Lumion Pro, um, all of those things come over with it. Now, note that this isn't currently compatible with Live Sync, so you have to import the model manually, but it still gives you the ability to quickly access that stuff that you set up in SketchUp so you're not duplicating work again inside of the main render engine. Now let's talk about some of the Lumion 2025 Pro version improvements. And so one important note for you to know is if projects get saved in the 2025 version, you can no longer open them in older versions of Lumion. So uh, just be aware of that. If you're opening older projects and saving them in the 2025 version, you can't open them in something older than 2025. All right, and so there's a bunch of new features in Lumion 2025, but, but the one that really kind of like speaks to me is the scene inspector tool over here on the left hand side. So that's going to show up when you click on the content library button right here. This little um, search scene is going to pop up. What you can do is you can see different things in your scene. So you can like isolate them and find them and things like that. And so you can use this to filter for different things. Like if you wanted to find all of the nature in a scene, for example, you can do that just by clicking in here and finding all of those. And so you can also pick up multiple different groups by holding control in here and selecting those. And when you do that, you can go in here and you can adjust things like the layer that they're on or um, their hue shift or other things like that. You can edit all of those different things at once. So that's really helpful for like putting things on layers and keeping your renderings organized. And so next up, if we hop over into photo mode and let's say we were to just pick one of these preset scenes right here, they now have an option um, when you render your photo to do an AI upscale. And so this is an interesting feature because basically what it does is it renders your image at half the resolution and then it will upscale it. So it'll double the resolution um, using AI. 
So what that does is that allows you to upscale images um, that your hardware doesn't support rendering to. So it'll render it at like half resolution and then it'll upscale it. Um, so um, the, it can be a time saver. It's really interesting. So let's say, for example, that I was to render um, this image right here. We'll go ahead and say that we were to render it to the quad HD. We'll just call this quad HD test right here. And so if you do this without the AI upscaler on, it's just going to render it to that resolution, right? So if we open this image up, it's going to have rendered it to that resolution. However, if we use the AI upscaler feature, what it's going to do is we'll do the same thing. So we'll do quad HD test upscaler and render it. What it's going to do is it's going to render it to half that resolution and then it'll use AI to upscale that image. And so if we look in this folder, right, the original HD test just rendered it to 2560 by 24 or uh, 2048. Um, but with the upscaler, what it did is it generates an original, which is half of that resolution right here. And then it generates an upscaled version, which is the full resolution, which is a smaller image right here. Um, I don't really see a massive performance difference in here. So it's kind of an interesting approach, but basically it's used a, um, AI in order to do this. And really they're not all that different if you look at this. Um, so um, it does feel like maybe if you do like the full render, you might get a little bit more detail, like maybe where the trees are or things like that, but they're really pretty indistinguishable unless you're looking for it. So um, that is definitely an option for generating your images. If you want to generate them like half resolution, then use the AI upscaler. Um, that's definitely an interesting approach. I'll be interested to see where this feature goes in the future um, because it is, I, I do think this is the right kind of use for AI because it doesn't change your design. It just makes what you've done already better. So I'll be interested to see where that goes, but that is an interesting new feature. Okay, and so next up is the volumetric fog. And so remember that there is already a fog built into Lumion right here, and you can kind of see this right here. Um, and it's a good effect, but it's not really volumetric. Well, if you remove this effect, and then you go into your effects over here under sky and weather, you can click on real-time volumetrics right here. Now notice that volumetrics is only going to work if you also have ray tracing applied. So you need to go into the effects under lighting and you need to make sure that you add ray tracing, right? So when you do that, that's going to add ray tracing right here. But now you can go into the volumetrics and you can adjust things like the intensity of the fog as well as the distance of the fog right here. And notice how this is really giving me a significantly better result. There's other options in here too, like the intensity of light, the intensity of the sun, other things like that. But this is doing a really good job of just giving me a better fog result using volumetrics. This is technically listed as a beta feature, but let's say that I was to toggle um, the volumetrics off and we were to add the old fog in. Um, the old fog is definitely like acceptable, but notice how it's just like a completely different kind of result in here, right? So if I was to toggle this fog off and toggle this fog on, notice how this just gives you a much deeper effect overall. All right, so now we also have fully ray traced glass and water. Really what that has to do with is the refraction of light as well as the reflection of light when ray tracing has been applied as an effect um, in the effects stack um, for your rendering. So basically where you can find that, you may not see it unless you click on this right here. Notice how there's an option at the bottom for fully ray traced glass and water. And so what that's gonna do, this is a preview without the ray traced glass and water. And then if we toggle this on and rerun it, notice how it's different, right? We're getting a lot more reflections off of this and refraction as well. So you're getting a lot more reflections off of the water right here. Now, what I've found is there's times where this other effect actually looks better depending on what you're trying to do. But if you're really trying to get those like reflections or getting um, light to like refra refract through the water or something like that, you might try the fully ray trace glass and water instead, see what it does to your result. Now, another thing they've added, which I think is actually a really 
good idea is their performator, their performance monitor up here on the right hand side. You might have noticed this because um, it kind of shows up here where it didn't before. But if I click on this, notice how it's going to pop out this performance center window. It's going to give you information on the number of frames that you have, um, as well as your resolution, the memory that's being used, things like that. Well, you can also use this to adjust the quality inside of the editor right here. So notice how if I drop this down to low, for example, um, this is going to change the resolution of what's being shown inside of my scene right here, or the quality of what's being shown inside my scene. And you can also change my editor resolution. So say I leave this on high, but I bring my resolution down right here. Notice how that's going to significantly affect the resolution of the preview in here, which is going to make this run a lot faster. And if you ever want to go back, you can just click right here in order to go back. Now, I have a pretty beefy computer, so it's not really affecting me one way or the other, but you could see a significant frames improvement in here um, if you toggle that resolution down and the quality low while you're doing work like this, and then you can come back in and toggle it back on um, in order to have that like higher resolution inside of your scene right here. Now, one place this actually is very apparent is when you go over into the photo section. Um, notice how those proxies are kind of happening automatically, especially when you have like heavier things going on in your scene, right? Like a bunch of effects or things like that. So notice how, for example, if I come in here and I toggle my reflection, effect off, it comes in here and it loads all of those trees in here because my frame rate jumps up above, I think it's like 30 or something like that. But as soon as I toggle that reflection back on, notice how that brings my frame rate down. And so what it does is it toggles those lightweight proxies in here like this. So this is very apparent when you start working in your actual photo mode um, and how that affects performance. So in addition, they've also expanded the assets contained inside of the library. So um, they now have seven ultra detailed photogrammatic trees. Um, so super detailed trees, as well as added an, an additional 61 Mediterranean trees and shrubs um, to their already pretty large plant and asset library. And so you can find those trees by searching for photogrammetry. Right here, those seven are going to pop up. So notice how you've got all of these different trees. But let's say we were to look at this. Um, I like the wild cherry. Let's bring that in. So if we look at this tree, this is going to be an ultra high detailed tree. So looking at the trunk and other things like that, it's just got a lot more detail than the typical trees in here. It's designed for kind of those close up renders. So we do have those photogrammetry trees in here now available for use if you need to do close-ups of your different trees and plants and things like that. So you can see how it's got like the root structure and the dirt at the ground. Um, they're just a lot more detailed than your typical trees um, if you do need those close-up renders. There's also new assets um, focused around like toys and schools and educational spaces um, that are included as well. So like playground assets and toys and other things like that. So little quality of life improvement, but if you select an object like this sofa right here in select mode and you pop out the advanced tools, there is an option here for flip object. The only thing I don't like about the flip object function is it flips around this object axis, which is fine, but if your object axis is on the side like this, then it moves it off to the side and you kind of have to move it back. So it'd be nice to be able to edit that object axis and move it over to the middle um, in order to be able to flip something in place, but still having a flip function is definitely valuable. And so one thing I always appreciate is additional templates and example scenes. Like anything where I don't have to do a whole bunch of setup is super valuable to me. Um, so they've got some new example scenes like the model gallery, which is designed to let you kind of preview some of the re ray traced features and things like that, as well as the new tropical villa, um, which is great for previewing like the uh, ray traced water and that kind of thing, as well as a template for the different seasons. So you can toggle full environments on and off in those templates. And then they've also added a presentation model in there as well. So all of those are now built into Lumion and you can access all of them uh, just with a single click. And so they've also added a number of different custom styles as well. 
So now you've got multiple different styles that you can select in order to um, render your model in different ways, right? Everything from more like stylized things like pen conceptual type stuff, which you'd probably want to get closer to your building um, before you did this. But um, there's the pen concept, there's different ray traced. There's a couple from competition winners. So like a morning style that's already set up to be morning as well as a dramatic day style um, and other styles like pencil sketches and vintage and things like that. So like, for example, if I want a black and white style, there's one kind of ready to go. I don't need to go back in there and um, create this myself or anything like that. So these are actually really valuable to me as a starting point. So it's nice to see more options in here that you can just pick one and then work from it. All right. So to me, pretty solid release. Um, so the big question for me and where I'm going to be really interested to see where this goes is how people integrate, integrate Lumia and View. At about $20 a month, it's actually a really good entry level um, um, renderer for SketchUp. It's significantly better than the built-in SketchUp renders. Um, and then it could also be a really good gateway for bringing things into um, Lumion Pro as well. So that's super interesting to me. And I also like the AI upscaling. Um, it's nice to see companies using AI in the way that, at least in my opinion, they should be used. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new version? Are you interested in Lumion View? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.